Well, welcome to ACC Network's coverage of the 2019 ACC Women's Soccer Tournament coming to you live from Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Virginia, Florida State, the first of two semifinals coming your way today from Cary. And here we have four top 25 teams, three of the top five in the country. What you see here are the seeds. Regular season champion North Carolina and the five seed NC State coming up next. The 2 3 matchup, a mouth watering one between Florida State and Virginia. For the Florida State Seminoles, they have both the ACC Offensive and Defensive Player of the Year, Castellanos, garnering that award on the offensive side, and there is their starting 11. And yeah, definitely some offensive threats for FSU, including that lady right there, Dana Castellanos, as well as Yuji Zhao in the midfield, Berkeley in the back. Virginia Cavaliers, the nation's number one team, but the three seed here in the ACC tournament, Angela Hughes. Here's how they'll line up. Yeah, coming out in a 4-3-3. Some threats in every single line from that back goalkeeper, Laurel Ivory, all the way to the top. Number nine, Ordonez, and also Spanstra and Torres controlling that midfield, and Megan McCool with that goal-scoring threat. Megan McCool leading the ACC in the regular season. 14 goals, two assists. Jen Hildreth, former Virginia Cavalier Angela Hughes, and we also have two other all-stars joining us on our crew today, Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay, two names very familiar to the ACC, and we feel very fortunate to have such an outstanding crew here covering the ACC Women's Soccer Tournament. Taking a look at the series history between these two teams, Virginia leading it overall, and they got the win in the regular season in fairly dramatic fashion, Angela. We were there to call it double overtime. It was a 1-0 win for the Cavaliers down in Tallahassee. They did it off a corner kick in the 104th minute. Florida State all in white. We'll start off with the ball and start our semifinal coverage today from Cary, North Carolina. Virginia Cavaliers in the navy tops and white shorts. And I think we're all very interested to see exactly how Florida State lines up here. Might be making a couple changes from what we're used to seeing. They are without Gabby Carl, their Canadian international, who is a starter on the back line. She is away on international duty with Canada. And something Mark Corn has done really all season long is tinkered a little bit with that formation, trying to find the right formation with the right personnel as well in the field that he has. So something that this team is not unfamiliar with in terms of making those adjustments on the fly. Virginia has had to make some changes as well. Two outside backs, including their starting outside back, Courtney Peterson, not available for this matchup. Claire Constant, who's been one of the top subs off the bench at that defensive position, also out for this match. So they've had to shuffle some things around a little bit. Behind that defense is Laurel Ivory, the fantastic goalkeeper who's given up just four goals all season long, 12 shutouts. She's done a tremendous job when called upon, and that defense in front of her certainly doing their part to help her out as well. And such a strength to have back there in the net for Virginia. And really providing that leadership. And Sumter touches it to the back line. Sydney Zandi getting that start at right back. That's one of those changes to keep an eye on. Phoebe McLernan, very versatile player. We often see on that right outside back spot. She's moved over to the left here. She is on the ball now. She'll play it forward toward Alexis Spanstra, who is offside. Spanstra, three goals, 10 assists on the season. Those 10 assists ranking second in the ACC. And interesting for Spanster too, someone who's played forward pretty much her entire life of playing soccer. Plays in the midfield, has done a tremendous job for UVA in terms of just really helping to build that tempo for them, maintain possession, something again that they're very good at doing as well as Florida State. So to hold on to the ball will be very important because as soon as it's lost, the other team will do a good job of holding on to it. And one of the things I think with both of these teams, Angela, that and both coaches are very aware as well 
the caliber of talent on these teams, whether it's so many international players in particular for Florida State or youth national team players for Virginia, that the coaches are aware of where they might play in the future, what that might look like. So maybe they're more of a midfielder playing on the back line or vice versa, but they are constantly, that's one of the things they think about. And now here's an early opportunity for Florida State. And if you watched Florida State's quarterfinal victory over Clemson, you might have noticed Dana Castellanos send one in from the corner flag directly into the goal. That is the potential she provides for the ACC Offensive Player of the Year from Venezuela. First corner of the match is off the post. It did bend out of bounds, catch the outside of the post. And it did really look a lot like that goal that you just described, Jen, in terms of the texture she put on it. And really being able to have someone post up on that near post, maybe for a flick. Cavaliers will try to build out of the back. Who can keep possession the best? There's Megan McCool, really, I think a lot of people's leading candidate for ACC Offensive Player of the Year with the work she's done. And both McCool for Virginia and Cassiano to Florida State were really good all season long, but they really started to come through down the stretch as well. And so close, right, with those decisions in terms of who got that award. I know we've heard over the broadcast in different games, people expected Megan McCool to get that in terms of what she's been able to do for this Virginia squad, but clearly Dana Castellanos as well has done a lot for this Florida State team in the way that she's scored goals and, and some really tremendous goals as well. Yeah, no question about that. We mentioned that highlight reel corner kick goal. She also had a beautiful assist on the game-winning goal to Jalen Howell Castellanos in that quarterfinal match. Rosanna Sumter stepping in to win that ball. Number six for Virginia. Talia Stoudy on the back line. Over to Zandi. And now Jarrett. Jarrett trying to turn on the speed. Her runner's in front of her, trying to hold up. Time it just right. Spanstra will get to the ball first. I love that ball by Jarrett, too. Just that second runner, not the runner McCool in the midfield. Spanstra being given time here. That is a freshman, Jenna Nyswanger. Freshman forward, by the way, who's back there trying to defend Spanstra. Gives up the corner. And while this is an area that Florida State has certainly gotten better at as the season has gone on, it was an Achilles heel, especially early in the conference season. Six goals against in their first six games from the corner. We welcome those of you just joining us to Cary, North Carolina for the 2019 ACC Women's Soccer Semifinals. First of two matches today. Features the Virginia Cavaliers and the Florida State Seminoles to the top five teams in the country. Virginia, the three seed. Florida State, the two seed in our tournament. Jen Hildreth, Angela Hughley's, Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay, our all-star crew, welcoming you to join us here in Cary, North Carolina. special place where champions are crowned. Saw the NWSL crown their champion on this field. It was the home team, the North Carolina Courage. And of course, a very familiar place for the ACC to stage its championship. You get a look at both of our matchups coming your way today. North Carolina, the regular season champs, taking on NC State in our second semifinal. McCool trying to slip behind, and she does. Megan McCool may get the rebound. Jeffers was saved by her defense that time. Malia Berkeley coming in to save the day, but Virginia on Virginia the attack. Number 22, Megan McCool. Yeah, great look here for UVA. Nice slip ball into McCool. Gets that deflection. Just isn't able to get it to one side past Jeffers. And this is really an important game. I think an opportunity for Caroline Jeffers back in goal for Florida State to come up with some of those big saves like she just did then. The regular season meeting between these two teams was a scoreless affair in regulation. Virginia eventually getting the game-winning goal in double overtime in at Tallahassee. It came off a corner kick. And in fact, that was the last goal on a set piece 
that the Seminole team has conceded. Virginia continuing to put the pressure on. That's Phoebe McLernan out to Alexis Banstra. Spanstra's had a lot of the ball here early. Both of these teams want to possess and establish a rhythm, keep some possession. Here is Dana Castellanos, the ACC Offensive Player of the Year and Midfielder of the Year, passing it back to her goalkeeper, Jeffers. Malia Berkeley on cue, so I can talk about her, the ACC Defensive Player of the Year. And one clear difference between the last time these two teams met and today is the weather. It was scorching hot in Tallahassee in that overtime matchup between these two and obviously cooler weather today. In the 50s, although sunny at the moment in Cary, North Carolina. Christian McFarland at the top of that Florida State attack. Back to Jalen Howell, who had the game-winning goal in the quarterfinals. Abby Newton, weren't quite sure where we'd see the transfer from LSU play in this match. She's played both in the attack and then also in the back line. She is in the back line as Gabby Carl, as we mentioned earlier, is out with the Canadian national team. Something that Mark Krikorian at Florida State is all too familiar with, having so many international players traditionally on his roster. Howell immediately had some pressure, but she evaded that first couple of defenders that came away. Now Castellano sees some space for Jenna Neiswanger, a member of the all-freshman team in the ACC this season. Clara Robbins. Trying to keep some possession and keep the ball. Does well to do so. Gets it to the middle. It's a little behind Yuji Zhao. Here's Dana Ordonez. Candidate for ACC freshman of the year of the season. She had tied for the ACC lead with 13 goals in the regular season, along with her teammate Megan McCool. Payne gets it over to Berkeley. Berkeley, who says attacking is in her blood, told us that this week. She's more of a midfielder by nature, but plays on the back line for Florida State. Florida State having a tough time figuring out how to really advance the ball here. Berkeley's not afraid to do it on her own. Finds Kristen McFarland. Ton of space for Nice Wonger. McFarland finds her. Virginia able to take it away though, and it is Megan McCool to come back, the senior who has been so tremendous for this team all season, but especially in the last five matches where she scored in every single one of them. Well, Berkeley is living in the attacking part of the field at the moment for Florida State. Two that Virginia has committed back here defensively. I mean, there is nobody up any higher than where Ordonez is right now, who is just stepping toward the ball. Nice Wonger been given some space, cannot get it through. That is Spanstra, who's come back and won it for Virginia. Now, can they keep it? Talked to Virginia head coach Steve Swanson. That was one of his keys. He felt this team did not do well enough in the regular season meeting. They got the win, yes, but he knew their performance was going to have to be better here. Yeah, Florida State's just doing a really nice job being patient, holding onto the ball, and really moving UVA around a bit, finding nice long or open on that right flank. But as soon as it's given up or UVA wins it back, they're having some difficulty right now just finding that outlet pass to Ordonez or even Megan McCool. And they're kind of giving that ball back up to Florida State. So a lot of that possession was in the attacking half for Florida State, and that's where they want to be. They want to possess it in that attacking half, not in their own half. Florida State, the reigning ACC and NCAA tournament champions. Last time they were on this field in Cary, North Carolina, they hoisted the NCAA championship trophy. Meanwhile, Virginia ready to make this year be their year. They're the number one ranked team in the country. They are the three seed 
in the ACC, despite the fact that they are one of two unbeaten teams remaining in the country. And if you wonder how you get the top-ranked team in the country to come in with a chip on your shoulder, well, that's part of how you do it. Beautiful ball from Castellanos right there to pick out Robbins. That is one of the things Castellanos can do. Puts it on a platter. Castellanos talked to us about having to be patient, knowing that teams all season long have tried their very best to, to keep her, to keep Yuji Zhao, Keep Jalen Howell, those three midfielders who can really dominate a game, keep them off the ball, keep them from establishing a rhythm. Yeah, they're really having some time on the ball right now, too. You're not seeing Virginia putting a ton of pressure. Even when Castellanos receives a ball, she has a few seconds easily to look up and figure out where she wants to play that ball. And you can see Virginia just letting the center backs have it really almost as long as they like. Rebecca Jarrett eventually coming in there to try to force things to go UVA's way. And that's definitely the key too. It can let them have the ball, but how quickly can Virginia close once that ball has transitioned to the other side and switched the point of attack? They're able to put that pressure on more quickly and they can really clog up that middle of the field. Well, we told you we have an all-star crew here. Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay working the sidelines for more on each of the teams. Let's start with Kat. Well, I'm going to really focus on Dana Castellanos. One of the things that we've looked at in the past few games is whether she's going to be on the inside of the midfield or more on the outside. In the Duke game, they really focused on putting her outside because they were having a lot of numbers in the middle. And right now with Virginia dropping a lot behind the ball, it'll be interesting to see where she is on the field. She's smart in her spacing. So keep an eye on her as the game goes on. And for more on Virginia, Lori Lindsay. Well, I spoke to Coach Steve Swanson right before the game started. And one of the areas that he wanted to focus on was his defense with Peterson out. He's moved McLaren to the left, McLaren into the left side. And then we see Zandy on the right side. Felt like this would give them more balance dealing with those FSU attackers, but also more balance getting into the attack as well. Back to you, Jen and Angela. Matt, thank you so much. Great to have you both with us down on the sideline. I really do feel like we have an embarrassment of riches here, right. Angela, between the three of you. The depth that we have, huh? <laughs> all Americans in this conference, all three of them, and members of the U.S. national team. I'm just glad I get to hang out with you guys <laughs> <laughs> for a couple of matches here today. You had that goalkeeper perspective too, Jen. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to go up against any of you, ever. <laughs> I swung her again, and she's the one that's been getting space the most so far for Florida State in that attack. Not the player that seems Virginia has really been keying in on here early. And Lori talked about the defense and some of the changes that they had to make Virginia in this match, Angela. They've been having to play a lot of defense so far. Yeah, and one of those things, too, nice is finding that ball out there, but... Virginia's able to shift quickly enough to shut her down and not really provide any service. So they're probably content even allowing that pass to happen on that right side if they can get over to her quick enough, which they have, which they have been doing so far. Virginia, a lot of people talk about their offense as well. They should. They led the ACC in the regular season, ranked third in the country. But their defense, I mean, they are so stingy. They've outscored opponents 55 to 5 this season. They still have five goals and only two in ACC play. And when you think about all the attacking personalities that the ACC has, I mean, that is quite a tremendous feat. Just the competition, but really the quality of attackers in this league. Roberts gets it back to Castellanos. Here's Jalen Howe. out of Ireland, a member of the ACC All-Freshman team, carries it forward. We talked about some of Virginia's accolades on the season as one of two unbeaten teams in the country for head coach Steve Swanson. 
And they've been at the number one spot in the polls for eight straight weeks. And have their sights set on winning championships. As their goalkeeper, Laurel Ivory, told us yesterday, number one doesn't mean anything if you don't have a trophy to show for it at the end. These Virginia Cavaliers, despite their continued success and always being amongst the top teams in the country, not had success here in this ACC tournament. Lost in the semifinals the last two years, the quarterfinal the year before that. So they're looking to make their first appearance in the championship game since 2015. And Virginia, let's get... Virginia. Angela, let's get your <laughs> keys to the match, your Hughley's hacks for Virginia. <laughs> I don't know if you mind calling uh, Virginia as well. <laughs> but yeah, for, for UVA, really looking to play off of the emotion of being here in an ACC championship weekend really brings. And, and this field as well, when we talked to Zoe Morse yesterday about being here, what it meant to her, just the fact that this is where championships happen, the, the courage and, and NWSL having that opportunity to play here and win and the opportunities that the UVA has had and haven't quite gotten there yet. So really using that to their advantage as well as really thinking about how they can make the best choices in that final third, when to hold the ball possessed, when to spin out and switch the point of attack and really when to go at goal. Well, at the moment, Angela, they just need to figure out how to get to the final third. I mean, the. Almost the entirety of this match has been played in this attacking half of the field for Florida State. Virginia has already made a substitution. Freshman Emma Dawson has come on to replace Sumter in the midfield. There is Zoe Morse, who just mentioned her a second ago, and the seniors for this Virginia team. Started every match this season and all but one match in her career at Virginia. Number 11 in Navy. Florida State, quite the opposite story in terms of success in the postseason. They've won six of the last eight ACC championships, including last year. Yuji Zhao with some fancy footwork, got it to Nice Wonger. The freshman takes the shot and is blocked. Spencer wins it and then is able to turn with it. Florida State's got a nice one. Can this third ranked offense in the country figure out a way to get into the attack you know neither of these teams are going to panic they're going to try to figure things out as they go along and right now it's been great defense being played by virginia they want to force florida state to play some defense and the offside flag is going to help the seminoles out that time against ordonez yeah it just needs to be a little bit faster you can see spanstra had that ball turned and was able to see the run being made. And yeah, you can just tell slightly offside there. But that's the right idea. And that's really what UVA needs to do in that transition play. Can they find Ordonez and just play a little bit quicker? Her movement was showing that she wanted that ball. But it just has to be a step or two faster. Florida State defense eludes a couple of Cavaliers trying to a little more pressure now, a little deeper in the field. Both of these teams well represented in the postseason accolades, although you talked about that emotion that Virginia's playing with Angela. I and mean, I think part of that is they feel perhaps rightfully so. They will get snubbed in some of the year-end awards, especially Offensive Player of the Year, feeling like their senior, Megan McCool, had every right to win that award with the performance she put on, many would agree. And even Ordonez, freshman, ties for the lead league in scoring, but lost out on ACC Freshman of the Year. That'll go to the North Carolina defender, Macy Bell, who you'll see in the second semifinal. Castellanos, one of four first-team All-ACC selections for Florida State. Here comes Robbins into the box, trying to get it to Zhao. Castellanos will take the quick shot. And she has been playing with so much confidence in the last few matches, in particular, Castellanos. And it's Abby Newton all the way up into the attack from that outside back position for Florida State. 
three goals and an assist for Castellanos in the last three. Yeah, and FSU is just finding some good opportunity and space from that flank play. And really, if they're able to build out of that space a little bit faster and get some more services into the box, they'll provide more opportunities. With all of these numbers back for Virginia, Angela, what challenge does that present for Florida State to find a way through? Well, you know what? This is what they've pretty much seen all season long with this block in terms of some of the players they played against, but it's still having those patience, having that patience for Florida State to build. I mean, they're doing a nice job. It's just a matter of creating better opportunities to find the goal. We also know Dana Castellanos has a tremendous strike from distance as well. So not just her, but Malia Berkeley coming out of that back into the midfield and providing some different looks for shots on goal. Berkeley and Ardonez just had a big collision. Ardonez is still down on the ground at the middle of the field. At the moment, our referee Mark Borak is going to let play continue. Now he will blow the whistle to go check on Ardonez. And while Ardonez is down, you, you could hear the goalkeeper, Laurel Ivory, for Virginia, quickly calling everyone in. She huddled the whole team together. Now she's going to come in and check on her freshman. And you see just hard tackle here going in for the ball. Both Ordonez and Berkeley challenging for that ball. It looks like Ordonez catches Berkeley's foot there in the end. Yeah, that's a, that's a dangerous tackle, I think, in my opinion, Angela. Potentially card-worthy from Berkeley. And it looked it almost looked a little bit more studs up from Berkeley yeah. too, which would evoke that that card, but we didn't see it. However, that's just it's a hard ball to really win as well because it's a 50-50 ball. They're both going at it at the same time. Ordonez has had quite a season. I think really opened everybody's eyes early on in particular when she just came out firing for the Cavaliers this season, had nine goals in her first five games, missed three matches with a foot injury just at the start of the ACC season, wound up 13 goals, which is now tied for second in the ACC, but during the regular season was tied for first along with her teammate, Megan McCool. Yeah, it's great to see her back up and, and the consistency that she's had as a first year at Virginia, I think is what's really important. It wasn't something where she just came onto the team and was able to really make a difference at first but a lot of it I think had to do with her being in with this team for spring season as well while we have a moment let's tell you a little bit more about the Florida State Seminoles and the terrific season they have had 15 4 0 overall two losses in conference play all four losses against ranked opponents and that shows in the RPI this is a team, as we mentioned, out to defend their titles from a year ago, both in the ACC and in the NCAA. So, Angela, let's get your keys to the match, your hacks for the Seminoles. Yeah, and for Florida State, I think they're actually doing one of those keys as well, just playing to their strengths, which really has to do with possessing the ball. They've been doing that quite well already in this first half and also doing it in their attacking third, which I think is a critical difference. And one of the things that Jalen Howell had told us was their biggest strength, they feel, is not panicking. So really being able to hold onto the ball, even though this Virginia squad is doing a tight block defensively, not to panic and just really look for their opportunities. But then having that urgency in the final third when they do have the chance to put a ball away, to go ahead and look for that opportunity quickly and at pace. I believe we're seeing a little bit of a shift in the formation. Rebecca Jarrett more central now. There was a substitution just a moment ago as Ordonez had to go off. Number 25, Alyssa Gorzak, came on in her place. She is more on the right side of the top of that attack where Jarrett had been. Taryn Torres have barely called her name. One of five second team all ACC selections for the Cavaliers. They only had one on the first team. That was Megan McCool. All plays on to that chip in the shoulder we were talking about potentially for Virginia. Here is Sydney Zandi. 
who started to really find her form at an injury at the beginning of the season. Playing in a different position now, but she has four goals, one assist, Zandi. Yeah, the irony of having the number one team in the nation coming into this semifinal match with a chip on their shoulder, I mean, you wouldn't expect to have that, but definitely something that I think is playing into the emotions and, and really that energy to get fired up for a game, even though you're already going to do so because it's a semifinal match. Talia Stoudy, number 20, a freshman out of Atlanta, Georgia, on the back line for Virginia. Trying to play it forward for Phoebe McLaurin. Goes out of bounds, be a goal kick for the Seminoles. Tomorrow we'll have another college football triple header for you right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Boston College hosting Florida State at Chestnut Hill at noon Eastern. The 19th ranked Wake Forest taking on Virginia Tech at Blacksburg. That's at 7.30. Coming up is 15th ranked Notre Dame and Duke. That's our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico at 7.30. Plenty of football coming your way. You can visit getaccn.com to look for providers in your area if you're still looking for ACC Network. shot a piece for our two teams so far in this first semifinal of the ACC tournament. Substitution for Virginia. Number three, Ashlyn Sarepka. Ashlyn Sarepka coming into the match for a big, very quiet Megan McCool in this first half. Senior. 14 goals on the season, McCool. Will make way for Sarepka, the sophomore out of Cornelius, North Carolina. They're very quiet because Florida State's had the majority of the ball so far in this first half. And that's something Virginia is going to need to look to switch and see how they can hold on to the ball a bit more, but also get that ball into their attacking third to their front runners. Line just waiting to go, looking for McLernan to play the ball. Didn't see an opening she liked. Time to turn there for Emma Dawson. Freshman out of Richardson, Texas, gets it wide. Going to be a foul against the Cavaliers. One thing Steve Swanson told us yesterday, Angela, head coach of Virginia, he said, when we win it, we've got to keep it. Yeah. And they have absolutely not been able to do that. That's not happening. And I think also just because Virginia has three players in the midfield to Florida State's four. So really finding more spaces and, and looking to bypass the midfield at first to some of the front runners. They have three up top and able to hold on to the ball a bit more, then lay it off to the midfielders in support. Florida State has had their outside backs up into that midfield yeah. so often as well in this match. Their center backs too, for that matter. Berkeley on the ball <laughs> right now. Both she and Payne have gone up into the attack. It's interesting because Florida State has certainly had the bulk of the possession. They've been on the attack more with only one shot to show for it, just one corner kick apiece for both teams too. So while it might seem like Virginia is not getting the first half they want, Florida State's not really either. And that's just more that patience plus urgency, I think, from Florida State to be able to hold onto the ball, but really be dynamic when the opportunity is on to attack. ACC 
NBC semifinals underway from Salem Stadium at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Our first matchup of the day, Florida State and Virginia. NC State, North Carolina coming up 5 o'clock Eastern time right here on ACC Network. Jen Hildreth, Angela Hughes, Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay, happy to have you along with us for the day. Should be a great day of soccer on ACC Network. Three of the top teams in the country, three of the top 10 teams. what we've been talking about right there, Angela, if you see just one shot for each of the two teams, they both averaged just about seven or eight in the first half for the season. Yeah, and that's also not unexpected when you have quality teams who possess the ball well, hold on to it, there's gonna be limited opportunities. But that just means you have to make the most of them and also create really good opportunities. I think there's one thing between having services, but the services need to be quality how about some quality right there? The flick behind her from Castellanos trying to set up Yuji Zhao. McFarland will make a run for this. It is cleared out of bounds. It will be a corner. Second of the match coming for the Seminoles. They had one really early. Castellanos took it, bent it just to the outside of that near post. Couldn't quite keep it in play. If they can have someone just stepping right in front of Laurel Ivory, that ball comes near post to be able to flick that on and keep that ball in play. Otherwise, Castellanos can also try to bend that one in. Yeah, pay attention right here. This could be one of those showtime moments with what Castellanos is able to do from the corner flag. It is right in the mix, and Laurel Ivory up to the challenge. The goalkeeper for Virginia jumped up, hit it out, did her job. That's such a challenging ball to save as well because you have four and five players coming at you who aren't a part of your team. You have your defenders in front of you as well for Ivory to just get a touch on that, but also to clear it out of danger. It's a nice save. That is that's so key. The great point, Angela, to get that punch and not only get it away, but get it clearly away. Now, however, Virginia defense is going to have to contend with a free kick as Jalen Howell was fouled. And Howell's drawing three Virginia players right now around her. Draws that foul and a good chance for Florida State. Castellanos. Bends the ball toward Howell. That was the connection that led to the game-winning goal in the quarterfinal. You can see why it's such a good one. They just weren't quite able to connect it on target that time. What an incredible service here by Castellanos. It is bent clearly into the path of Howell, just a little bit, just slightly behind her, not able to connect as well, but that is exactly who you want on the end of that service, Jalen Howell, with her ability in the air. 5'8", sophomore Jalen Howell from Colorado, member of the first team All-ACC team this season second team a year ago. Castellanos on the first team for the third straight year. And these two teams match up so well is also because not just their possession oriented style, but you talked earlier, Jen, about the experience that these players have. Some of these players, youth national team experience, but then you look at the coaching staff as well. We hear time and time again about how Virginia, how Florida State are professional environments. And that, I think, is true testament to the coaches, both Steve Swanson and Mark Corian, who have both coached at that national team, youth national team, full team, as well as professional level. Virginia just having some trouble getting the ball out of their own end 
here as Florida State puts it in the corner and will earn a corner. First time we get to see it taken from this side of the field. And I believe it'll be nice longer this time to take it for Florida State. I got 20 on the keeper. Yep. Watch 20. Nice one. Five assists on the season. First time we've seen anyone other than Castellanos take the set piece for Florida State. She's going to play it on the ground. Castellanos is lingering just outside the area. Nice Wonger goes toward the far post, and it is out of bounds. Yeah, this service comes in off the short corner, but really looking for that far post. And I believe it does go off the head of UVA. That was indeed yeah. the call. Yeah, they're going to get the corner on the other side, so Castellanos will try it over to take it. Remember, Virginia conceded five goals all season. So tough to break down, but these set pieces present a different challenge. Cassianos drives it. Ivory touches it. And let's try it again. Corner kicks. I thought they would say. Looked like it looked clearly like Ivory touched it. She's even shaking her hand. It looked like she actually punched the top of the oh, crossbar the there. Trying to go for the ball and yeah, she actually doesn't get a hand on it. So great call by the referee. Yeah, excellent work. Better eyes out there than we had up here initially. Castellanos has now hit the crossbar and the post. But not the target, not yet, from the corner. Under eight minutes to play in our first half. Still scoreless. Yu Zhao, three Cavaliers around her. That team defense works as they take it away. Zandi in a more attacking role at the moment. Started the match at outside back, but she is more naturally an attacking player. Has a goal or an assist in the last three matches, Sydney Zandi. And Virginia has gone to its bench much more in this first half. One, they were forced to with Ordonez shaken up after a collision. Now they get a free kick. Morris wants to play it short over to Spanstra. A lot of shuffling around as the subs have come in for Virginia. Here comes Payne with a ton of speed moving forward. Irish International out to Robbins. Virginia's home field in Charlottesville is such a wide field at Clackner Stadium, and I think one thing Florida State's doing really well is using the width of the field. Virginia hasn't quite done that yet. They're used to staying their heels on that sideline, and, and I'm not really seeing that width that they're typically using to build out of their defensive attack into the attack. I think if they're able to do that a bit more, they can open up the middle of the field a bit. We'll see where the attack goes now. They're going to look central. But that is Ashlyn Sarutka called for offside. That's happened a couple of times yeah. when Virginia has tried to go behind the defense. They've been caught offside three times in this first half. And think about right now, Virginia is without Ordonez, McCool, and Jarrett. They're, they're three yeah. starting forwards not in the match right now. I think it's a little shocking, really, how defensive Virginia has been in this first half. Yeah, almost the first five minutes, I thought both teams were looking to kind of be a little bit more timid than I'm used to seeing in terms of how they go out and start matches. And I just think that's part of the respect that they do have for one another. It's also one of those players who provides some of that width and also services into the box. So to have her not in the match right now, I think is why we're not seeing some of those services come in as frequently. And you're looking to see, or they're playing a little bit more direct. 
I'm going to be fair. She wasn't doing it when she was in the match. She didn't really get that many opportunities, right. but... She didn't get the ball as much, right? Right. right. Giveaway gives it back to Gorzak and Virginia. Can they make something of it? Phoebe McLernan hustles all the way up to try to make something of it, but it'll be a throw for Florida State. Mark Richt is back this week for the huddle with Jack Collinsworth, Eric McLean, and EJ Manuel to get you set for the weekend slate of ACC football games. That's tomorrow at 11 a.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. Florida State will bring in Michaela Thomas. 5'5 five, five sophomore has a couple of goals and an assist on the season. She'll replace McFarland in the attack. Stamstra trying to get around Robbins. She can't, but she does earn the free kick. Robbins getting the start today, her ninth of the season, the redshirt junior out of Stafford, Virginia. And these set pieces become even more critical, especially in games like this, when you don't have much of the ball and you have limited opportunities to score. Florida defense hasn't had to do much in this match. Will this be the moment Virginia finds a way to test them? Not initially, not with that ball. It was easily handled by Florida State. Here's McLernan, an All-American a year ago. It's actually sick in the regular season meeting between these two teams. Did not start that match. Only match she didn't start all season. One of those players, Angela, who's just so impressive with her versatility, mm -hmm. can play really anywhere along that back line. Yeah, I mean, she's used to playing even centrally, and to see her as a flank player, working up and down, trying to get into position in that attacking third, making those runs out of the back. Kirsten Pavlisko on the outside, on the far side for Florida State in the back of that defense. Throw in coming for Virginia. See a lot of navy and orange in that section right near where this throw in is happening. Of course, there could be all kinds of colors hidden under those big coats everybody has to wear. It's pretty chilly here today in Cary. Dropped about 20 degrees from a near 70 degree day yesterday. That temperature is expected to continue to drop as the evening goes along. About 50 degrees right now. There is a bit of a breeze that comes through every now and again to smack you in the face. <laughs> but I'd have to think this is pretty great soccer weather. And this could be an opportunity here for Michaela Thomas. At the moment, though, she's all alone. It's Thomas against three Virginia defenders, and it will result in a goal kick. Yeah, she did such a great job one minute, one minute saving me. that ball from going out of bounds on the width. You can see here, Zhao plays that ball nicely into her with that speed Thomas has, able to hold on to it, and she tried to just hold the ball up and wait for some of her support players. Fortunately, went out of bounds. Just seconds remaining in our first half now. From Cary, North Carolina. <laughs> Joey Morse comes away with it. Still has the ball. Morse looking for that front line who is trying to hold their line, not get caught offside. I can't do it, and as the seconds tick away, it looks like we will be deadlocked at zero after our first 45 minutes. Perhaps as defensive 
a 45 minutes as we've seen from Virginia this season. Yeah, and I think that is a little bit surprising just given what they can do technically on the offensive side. But again, still a lot of game to be played here. Florida State had the majority of the possession in that first half, but still weren't able to generate too much other than their four corner kicks. Let's hear what their head coach, Mark Krikorian, has to say. He's with Cat. Thanks, Jen. Coach, what do you think of that first half? Well, I think that... Um... Yeah, there was a long stretch in there where we had pretty good control of the game, but uh, I'm not sure we were dangerous enough. Um, um, the movement was pretty good. The passing was pretty good. Um, being able to, to play in the half of the field was all pretty good, but we got to be a little bit more dangerous. Well, was it a surprise to you to see such a, a Virginia defense drop back so low? Uh, you know, I think it was a combination. Uh, I think it was, um, you know, them... Of course, uh, playing in a, uh, a manner where they were good and compact and also us being able to step up and keep the ball there. So uh, probably a little bit of a com combination. I think they're probably going to want to play higher in the second half. All right. Thank you so much, Coach. Jen, back to you. Thank you, Cat. Great questions there. That was exactly what I wanted to hear from Mark Krikorian. We'll have more coming up from the half here in Cary. Scoreless so far in our first semifinal between Virginia and Florida State. Spots in the sunshine in the stands. A good place to be on a chilly day in Cary, North Carolina. We have two ACC women's soccer semifinals coming your way today. This is our first. We're at halftime between Virginia and Florida State. All tied up. Zeros on the scoreboard. And then the regular season champion, North Carolina Tar Heels, taking on NC State. Two teams who are quite close to Cary, North Carolina. Not a long trip for either of them as they will meet up in our second semifinal. Had a chance to hear from Florida State head coach Mark Krikorian before the break. Cat Whiteheel awaiting the arrival of Steve Swanson from Virginia. Being told he is joining her now. So, Cat, we'll go down to you with Coach Swanson. Well, Coach, what did you think of your team's performance in that first half? Yeah, well, we gave up a lot of possession there. And I think uh, we, we kind of got on our heels a little bit too much. Um, I don't think they penetrated us, so I think we were in good positions to solve that, but I just think we, uh, we gave up too much possession. I felt like we were sitting back a little too much. You know, we did, that wasn't the intention, but uh, I just think we, we've got to have a little better mentality to put pressure on the ball a little bit more and come out of our lower block once we're in it. Well, we, we talked about that during the game about that lower block. How are you going to change that in the second half? Well, I think some of it's our mentality. Uh, some of it we may change some things up in the midfield to see if we can deal with that, that their spacing a little bit better. They're getting in between our, our back line and our midfield line, so how can we sort that out? We've talked a little bit about that. But let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if we can't just, you know, amp up our intensity a little bit and see if we can't break their pressure. I mean, there's an opportunity there for us if we can win it back and and move the ball and solve their pressure, there's a ton of space there for us. So that's another thing. I didn't think we did a good job of kind of holding the ball and, and moving it and getting in their end. I think once we can get it in their end, I think we'll, we'll be able to keep possession like that. So it was really a territorial game, and I think we lost the majority of that, obviously. So. Well, how is Ordonez Ordo doing? I, I think she'll be fine. I think she just took a hit pointer, so I think she'll be fine. All right, thank you so much, Coach. You. Jen, back to you. Thank you, Kat. Glad to have you ask that question, too. We are looking at Deanna Ordonez and wondering the fabulous freshman for Virginia. 13 goals on the season. Saw her leave the match in the first half, Angela, but sounds good that she will be available to come in in the second half. And also a couple of things to look for now. What do you think about what you just heard there from Coach Swanson? Yeah, and if I would give a confidence score in that first half, I would give that to Florida State. They definitely look to be a little bit more confident on the ball. And I think that's what we saw from Virginia was a little bit more timidness. And that's what Steve Swanson is alluding to there with that mentality. So it would be interesting to see how they switch that on quickly in the second half, as well as any adjustments that they can make in that midfield. Such a dynamic mid midfield for Florida State. So expecting both of these teams really come out and go after it in the second half. Virginia in particular <laughs> has found a way to turn it on. 35 of their 55 goals in the regular season and that including their quarterfinal match coming in the second half. Megan McCool had the game winner in the quarterfinal. That one coming against Duke in the 55th minute. Cassiano's goal and an assist in Florida State's quarterfinal win against Clemson. Both teams getting to play those matches on their home fields. Top eight teams make it to the ACC tournament in women's soccer. And the top four teams 
post that quarterfinal round. And now we gather here at Cary, North Carolina, where, as the players told us, and as you can attest, Angela, it is a special place to play. Championship feel for sure when you step onto the field or into the stands here in Cary. Second half underway. You know, Angela Hughley is keeping a close eye on exactly how that Virginia midfield is aligned. Steve Swanson hinting there might be some changes there, so we'll keep an eye out for that as this one goes along. Taryn Torres, Alexis Spanstra on the ball right now. A little bit lower at the moment. It's like Emma Dawson, number 14, will start the second half in the midfield for Virginia. That's a change. Sydney Zandi is also in the midfield. That's where she moved into, although she started the match at right back. And it looks like right back is where Spanstra is playing yeah. at the moment. Alyssa Gorzak, number 25 on that far side, also getting the start in the second half as Ordonia starts on the bench. So she's up in the attack. Ball played forward, Rebecca Jarrett waiting for it. That was Zandi who tried to set up Jarrett, get her involved in this match really for the first time and it does result in an early corner. Yeah, Malia Berkeley on that last touch there after Jarrett tries to get to it. She didn't get that touch, even though it went to be a corner kick, that could have been an opportunity for Jarrett to take a shot on goal. Sun was in the eyes of Caroline Jeffers in the first half, the goalkeeper for Florida State. Now she's in the shade. Virginia once again going to play it on the ground. We saw them working on this yesterday in training. Oh, they got a good look out of it. And the Cavaliers still on the attack, something we were not able to say often in the first half. But Kristen McFarland, the redshirt junior for the Seminoles, took it away momentarily. Torres turns around, doesn't see an opening forward, so we'll play it back to Stoudy. There's Malia Berkeley, ACC Defensive Player of the Year. Redshirt junior having quite a season. First team all ACC selection. First time she made that first team in her career. It was third team a year ago. And she started every match for Florida State on their run to the NCAA and ACC championships. Zoe Morris had to hurry with Cassianos closing in. Turnover goes to Pavlisko. First team all ACC selection for the second time in her career. In her two years with the Seminoles, Zhao was ACC freshman of the year a year ago. Laurel Ivory taking her time in goal. Zhao now Castellanos. Berkeley. Saw an opening for Nice Wong on the far side. Quick touch from Zhao. Payne battling her way to the ball. Had to fight off McCool to get there, but it will be a throw for Virginia. Not really. It's looking quite similar to that first half we just saw. Again, finding Nice Wong out in that wide flank and what a great touch she just had. Play that ball into Zhao. Virginia's intensity, though, I think just putting a little bit more pressure quicker on the ball is, is one of the changes that I'm seeing right now. Yeah, it seemed like Florida State just had all the time in yeah. the world to start their build in particular in that first half. And while a lot of these players have been here before, it's, it's still an opportunity of, of nerves to play a factor in that first half, so perhaps that's part of the shift that's needed. 
I do think Florida State came out a bit more confident than Virginia did initially. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that, Angela, because you sometimes forget about that with yeah. the, the caliber of these programs and these players and a lot of them international experience on some level, and you think it's no big deal, but maybe it still is a little bit when you step out here and you know that you really have that postseason feel. I mean, this is something that it just means a lot to these players to be able to be in this position not just with two top teams and, and what their ranks right now, but this is why they chose the schools in, in some respects that they did because they knew they had an opportunity to be in a championship match. Clara Robbins finds her way to the ball. Zhao splits a couple of defenders. Put her cross though up into the top of the net. Florida State has won championships, six of the last eight ACC titles going to the Seminoles and for Virginia coming here trying to claim that championship. These two teams know they're going on to the NCAA tournament and as top ranked teams in the country, Virginia number one, Florida State number five in the latest rankings they would also love an opportunity to potentially host so that's something else at stake to host and to host for a long time in that NCAA postseason. And for Florida State, a little bit of redemption as well from the last time they played UVA in regular season, losing that game at their home field, as well as just bragging rights to be able to get to this point and try to be crowned the ACC champions. Go. You know, I think one thing too with these two teams that both tell you, coaches and players alike, that they truly do learn from every match. And so, you know, both of them looked at the regular season meeting as a learning experience, one that stung a little bit more painfully for Florida State. But this match too, you know, they, they know what good preparation this is right here as they prepare themselves for that ultimate goal of hoisting the NCAA championship trophy at the end of the year, something that Florida State has done twice. And Virginia, though they've been to three college cups, still looking for that elusive national championship. McFarland out to nice Swanger, plays it back. A lot of space for Howell now. Can they find the passes, find the angles, find the space? Nice Swanger will take the shot. It bounces away from Ivory, but she's quick to snatch it up. Yeah, and that's actually really unlike Laura Ivory to have that type of rebound, that ball bouncing off her chest like that. But that's something Florida State can take advantage of in terms of just testing her a bit more, getting more shots on goal. Nice build up by them. Yeah, Ivory had four saves in the regular season meeting against the Seminoles, was named ACC Defensive Player of the Week, partly for her efforts in that match. Three times this season, Ivory was named ACC Defensive Player of the Week. She wound up being named the third team All-ACC goalkeeper. And in the regular season, drama in Tallahassee as it was scoreless in regulation. And then we get into overtime after some chances early. This is what would do it, though, for Virginia. Off the corner kick, Megan McCool. Puts it home for the game winner, and that just really, I think, helped kickstart the streak that she has been on now. Six goals in her last five matches. Yeah, and you talked about this a little bit in the first half when she was subbed out in terms of a quiet Megan McCool, which I totally agree with, but I do think it was because of the lack of possession UVA had. Here comes Virginia now. Jarrett, some numbers for the Cavaliers. It's headed up and out by Payne, but a good-looking attack that time by UVA. And they're not having a lot of attacking opportunities, but when they do, they are great ones. This one again, Jarrett, not as wide, it's a little bit more central than she's typically in, but good positioning for her. Maybe the first touch, it was in a bit more towards goal, could have set her up for a cross, but looking for someone, no Virginia player nearby for that service. 
season low in shots for both teams in the first half. You get the feeling the second half is going to be a bit different. Virginia doesn't want to put it in the air, at least have not shown that yet. When they've had set pieces, they've kept it on the ground. Now Torres will be the one to deliver the ball. It bounces up, and Jeffers at 5'9 gets it off the high bounce. That's interesting, too, to see if either team starts to change a little bit in terms of their defensive pressure, where they're putting that line of confrontation, where that starts. We haven't really seen too much of that out of Virginia. They have to do it together, though. Either, either team, whenever they're putting pressure on that back line, the recognition has to be there from the entire team. It can't just be one player going off by herself. Virginia, one of two teams in the nation, still remaining unbeaten. Top-ranked team in the country. A bit odd that the Cavaliers did not get a chance to play their final regular season game. They were slated to go up to Syracuse, but weather forced that game to be canceled on Halloween night. So Virginia only playing nine regular season conference games. Didn't get a chance to try to earn a higher seed. So they come in as the three seed. Florida State the two. Nice Wonger into the corner. Gets in line. Where she is held up by Gorzak. For more of the Seminoles, let's bring in Kat. Hey guys, so I just overheard Coach Mark Corian talking about to Kristen McFarlane up front. She needs to come back and get the ball a bit more. He said the center backs can't get you the ball because the wind is actually too strong. It's going about 10 to 15 miles per hour. You don't feel it the whole time, but when that gust does happen, those center backs can't hit her, so she needs to come back, get the ball a little bit more. I'm sure you feel the wind. Yeah. <laughs> we do up here as well, but that's a great point. And it's actually a little bit surprising, too, because when you have someone like Amalia Berkeley, even Dana Castellanos, who can hit that ball so well, not just distance, but accuracy, I'm actually a little surprised it's playing that much of a role. Just at that very moment, I think you could probably hear the wind blowing through our microphones. But they are going in different directions, so the wind, I think, has turned now going against Florida State. And Jen, you mentioned that game versus Syracuse. That was actually one of the reasons why Virginia came into this as a third seeded team and Florida State the second. So again, playing into that chip on their shoulder a bit. Big ball from Torres looking for Gorzak. Reminder, Deanna Ardonia is still not in this match for Virginia. We saw this in the quarterfinal, too, and wondered about it, but talking to Coach Swanson said it was nothing where it wasn't like he didn't like what she was doing. He just might want some different elements in terms of where he's looking to put numbers or what he's trying to do tactically, but still, what a weapon still on the bench in terms of an offensive threat 13 goals for Ordonez. But really, her strength is in and around the box, and she wasn't really able to get much of the ball, so very underutilized in that first half. slows to nearly a halt as McCool and Virginia contend to just let Berkeley put her foot on the ball for the moment. But now Florida State up and moving. They find Zhao. McFarland's offside. She's out of the play. Zhao's going to look to the other side of the field. Here comes Robbins. Castellanos got it, was ready to shoot it. At a moment's notice, Morris got it in her way, and it'll be a corner kick. But great movement offensively here by Florida State. McFarland makes that run, which really opens up the space for Castellanos who looks like she's gonna get the ball, but then gets out wide and able to make a little bit of a combination play and really get that corner kick off. 
fifth corner kick out of the match. First of the second half for the Seminoles. And now the sun in the eyes of Laurel Ivory. Shadows creeping across the field. The ball driven, cleared off the near post by Virginia. Zhao, boy, she has a knack for seeing where the space is and putting the ball right in there. Nice water. Tomorrow, it's another college football triple header for you right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. We start off with Boston College hosting Florida State. That's at noon Eastern. The 19th ranked Wake Forest taking on Virginia Tech in Blacksburg. And at 7.30 Eastern, it's number 15 Notre Dame and Duke in our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico. That match going on just down the street. That matchup, I should say, at Duke against the Fighting Irish. Always plenty going on here in the Triangle area. Duke, North Carolina, NC State, all in the vicinity, and so many sports going on, fall sports finishing out their seasons, winter sports getting underway, basketball has tipped off. Well, you know that Spanster would love any opportunity to get forward, but Cool's gonna be offside that time. Spencer naturally an attacking player, but forced into duty in the back line at the moment. Remember Courtney Peterson, the natural starting left back typically for Virginia, out for this match with an ankle injury. And Claire Constant, who would certainly be one of the favorites to come in and take her place there, also dealing with an ankle injury. Virginia thinking they might have Constant back for this one, but Steve Swanson not quite feeling she was ready to go. And that really is, I think, a big ad adjustment, too, for Virginia Spencer in the back line. The vision she's able to provide in that midfield as well as that playmaking ability is a little bit lost. And we see in that last pass, too, to McCool, the way she's able to just thread those seams in between the defenders. But now being pushed back on that back line, there's less of that going to be able to happen in the attacking third for Virginia. Sardonia is getting ready to come in. Free kick goes just outside that 18 yard box. Dawson got a leg to it. Now Jarrett back to Dawson. Her touch though gets away from her. McFarland will give chase, but Zoe Morris will make the easy play back to her goalkeeper. build out Sydney Zandi has McCool in the middle some pressure from Zhao and just actually a bit fortunate really for Virginia yeah. there the foul happened and now the free kick yeah, and Zandi gets this ball you see Zhao working her way back nice professional foul there was it holding I think just holding on to her arm slowed her down enough yeah but really, that was an opportunity, I think, for Zandi to play that ball a little bit quicker as Zhao started to close down that space. She needed to release the ball a lot sooner. And that's also another reason why Virginia is getting offside so many times is just the speed of play needs to be one, one step faster, I think. Stouty into the middle. Second ball is taken by Florida State. been closer to McFarland than I think she even realized. <laughs> <laughs> Connections 
just not on point for Florida State there. Lori Lindsay down on the sideline as well. And Lori, you can add some to what we've been talking about. So Ardonia's coming in. We'll get to Lori in just a moment because look, we need some goals in this match, right? 0-0 zero, zero so far. Ardonia is one of the top scorers in the league this season. And how about now? We hear from Lori Lindsay. Thanks, Jen and Andrew. One of the things that we keep hearing on this bench here for UVA from Coach Swanson is that not only do they need to play faster, but they also need to get a hold of the ball, play simple, just connect the first pass, so then they can break those lines, get in between the seams of Florida State, and then they'll be able to play quicker, be able to find opportunities going forward. Yeah, Lori, it doesn't seem like they've found those seams much in this match. They do now, however, earn themselves a corner kick. Fourth of the match for the Cavaliers. And there is a little bit of space in between that midfield line and the defensive line of Florida State right behind Howell. But as Lori just mentioned, they don't have the ball. It's hard to really break down those opportunities. See Virginia play every single set piece on the ground so far. Not this time, it is in the air. And I should say every corner, they have put some free kicks into the air. But that one goes out and Torres can try it again. similar setup we showed you not too long ago in the regular season double overtime from this side of the field the corner kick it was the game winner Jeffers punches that one it doesn't go far Virginia still trying to attack Spanstra turns with it Spanstra still in the box it is still there for Ardonia as how many times have we seen the freshman hope those home that time it's a little off but another corner kick coming well, there's nothing like good chaos in an 18-yard box to create some opportunities here. Virginia getting on the ball. Florida State not able to clear it out, and it's Spanster who takes the strike but then does a nice little turn to create some space and separation from a defender. That one goes out of bounds for another corner kick opportunity for Virginia. You have to think Virginia likes what they just saw. Chaos, you called it. Cavaliers will try to create that again from the corner. Spanster this time. And it's a head. Just as you were just saying, Jen, in terms of these corner kicks and what happened in the regular season of UVA, Florida State, and winning for Virginia, able to convert off the corner, something Florida State has struggled with but got better at. Zoe Moore standing within the six-yard box, absolutely unmarked, has a nice opportunity off that service to put that one home. 11th assist of the season for Spanstra and number 11, Zoe Morse has her first goal of the season, but Castellanos and Florida State want it back. Nice Wonger taken down right outside the area. Boy, I'm telling you, if that is a few inches to the left, we're talking penalty kick. And this is a very special opportunity. You can see actually some of the UVA players holding their hands up holding a five up, and you can see this foul right here, right outside the box, just getting entangled there. But these five minutes after a goal is scored, critical time to switch that mentality on and make sure you don't give anything up, but a critical time for Florida State to try to get back and even this one up. Castellano standing over the ball. One of the all-time leading scorers, one of the greatest to ever play in the great history of Florida State. Ranked second all time in both goals and points in her career. Castellanos, the bend. Too far. Not the touch she wanted on that ball. But corner kicks, as we said, were a problem for Florida State earlier this season and Virginia capitalizing here. Yeah, and it was something that they've worked on. They've gotten better. But you can just see Morris just standing there unmarked. Look at this. No one on her. No one within five yards, really. 
to put any type of pressure, knock her off balance. Seventh goal allowed this season from a corner kick, and how about this? This is a good one for Zoe Morse that I just realized. That's her first goal of the season for the senior. She had one goal last year. Angela, would you like to guess against which opponent that came against? Who was it, Jen? Who was it? That would be the Florida State Seminoles in the <laughs> ACC semifinals. Well, we know which game she likes to come up big in. Indeed. Now, in that semifinal, her efforts were not enough as Florida State did win it and route to winning the ACC championship. But talk about defenders coming up big in big moments. You got to love that. And this is also that emotional element too that when we spoke with some of the players for virginia in terms of they've been here before and they haven't quite gotten there and they just really want to convert and be able to make it their own this time to win this game and find themselves holding that trophy at the end something zoe morris told us yesterday he said i want to showcase the beauty of this game and, and what this team can bring here on this stage They've suffered semifinal defeats in the ACC tournament the last two years, Virginia. They were ousted in the quarterfinals the year before that. And you have to go back to 2012 to the last time Virginia won an ACC title. Last time they played in the championship game was in 2015. And they lost in that one in penalties to Florida State. So many great storylines with these two teams. Virginia Cavaliers, top ranked team in the nation, but the three seed in the ACC tournament leading the Florida State Seminoles, one nothing. Zoe Morse, her first goal of the season off a corner kick is the difference so far. Under 20 minutes to play from Salem Stadium at Wakeman Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Jen Hildreth, Angela Hughes, Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay. Happy to have you along with us as we are Counting down the minutes now in our first semifinal, Virginia leading Florida State, North Carolina, NC State. The second semi coming up at 5 o'clock Eastern right here on ACC Network. And we'll have you covered between matches as well. And with 18 minutes left here, Jen, if there's any other team, I might say this could be Virginia's game. But with it being Florida State and their ability to come back from behind, which they have done this season to win games, and that patience and confidence that they do have, this is still an opportunity for them to look to even up the score. As Jalen Howell mentioned to me earlier this season, she really feels that's one of the strengths of this team is just that patience that they have and the ability and knowingness that they can come from behind, make a difference, and look for those opportunities. Cassianos finds Robbins. Pavlisko overlapping on the outside. Robbins felt it, got it to her. Pavlisko, nice move. Still on the ball, in the box, out to Cassianos. An ACC Offensive Player of the Year. Has not been her match so far. And that time you could see Taryn Torres just really right there in front of Castellanos, just being able to put some pressure on her, not allowing any shots, really not the best of balls into that box. Lori Lindsay down on the field near the Virginia bench. Lori, what do you have for us? We're getting word that University of Virginia is going to go to a 5-4-1, try to lock this game down. Don't want to sit back, but just make sure they get numbers behind the ball and not allowing Florida State's potent attack to be able to get in behind or at least play make in front of them. Well, Florida State, as you mentioned, Angela, has been lethal. 5-4-0 when they have conceded first this season. That is an incredible number that they have come back and won more often than not, right? even when conceding the match's first goal. So to Lori's point, that's why you may see this Virginia team commit more numbers back defensively, really challenge Florida State to try to figure out a way to break them down, something they could not do in the first half. And Virginia started the match really much lower. Here comes Payne. Nice Wonger running onto it. 
put the service on the ground early, but it wasn't a good one. McLernan clears it out of bounds. Will be a throw for the Seminoles. Abby Newton, sophomore in her first year at Florida State after transferring from LSU, takes the throw. Tonight, after Colorado State and fourth-ranked Duke men's basketball, the All-ACC team will have the latest scores, news, and information from around the conference. Nobody covers the ACC like we do. That's 9 p.m. Eastern right here on ACC Network and the ESPN app. See how life after Zion is in Durham with the Duke Blue Devils this year, Zion Williamson. And the spectacular show that he was a year ago on the basketball court. And you can see even right now the shape that Virginia has after that substitution. Ordonio is still up top as that target. But clearly more of a defensive formation and shape by UVA right now. Sydney Zandi, Cam Lexo into the match, off the bench for Virginia. College soccer, you are allowed a re-entry in the second half as far as substitutions go. Jarrett and Dawson, the two replaced at the moment. And I think one of the challenges really as well for teams when they move into more of a defensive formation is can they still be threatening on the attack. Sometimes the best defense is doing more things offensively. And yes, they can have that formation, have more players in the central part of the fields, but they, can they also get that ball into the other half and not really be as close to their own defensive goal? Well, you want to make sure you don't get away from who you are, exactly. too, right? I mean, that's always part of the key. You know what Florida State wants to do right now. It's this. They want to attack. Get the ball in dangerous areas. It is up and over. And it looks like Robbins at the moment on that far side. Nice swung on the near side for Florida State. Florida State has done an excellent job all day. Really a finding that right side flank to get services. And Zhao, Yuji Zhao, just gets underneath the ball on that one, sending that one over. Should have been better from her. Just the quality and technical ability that she has. She knows she can do better than that. Five goals, four assists on the season for Zhao. Was the ACC freshman of the year last season, national freshman of the year. I talked to her soccer and made the first team all ACC once again. Bullied off the ball by Florida State. Zhao turns, wanted to get to McFarland, and there were just five or six Virginia jerseys in the vicinity. You hear the shouts from the Virginia bench, take care of the ball. Ooh. Robbins has to take care of that. Those never feel good, especially when it's cold outside. Ouch. My bad on that one. Yeah, but even in that last sequence, too, you could see Virginia wins the ball back, but then they immediately give it to Florida State. Can they hold on to that ball? Can they build a bit more out of their defense and just hold on to it? And Ordonia is just presenting herself as that target forward. Can she hold on to the ball, allow time for her midfielder to come up and support her, even letting them possess the ball, but higher up the field? Well, Robbins will get checked out, just make sure she is okay after taking that ball to the side of her head. Florida State's run in the postseason such a great story last year. They came into the ACC tournament as the seven seed, had a lot of injuries, international absences throughout the regular season, didn't really get their regular starting 11 together until just the right time, postseason. So they were a seven seed. They become the lowest seeded team ever to win the ACC championship as they did a year ago. 
This year, a little more smooth sailing, not as many international absences. Now, Gabby Carl is out today with the Canadian national team. Now they find themselves trailing, though. This Virginia team that is determined to not just be close, but to get all the way there this year, something that this group of players has never been able to do at the ACC tournament. Well, we heard about what's going on from the Virginia bench. Cat Whitehill, what are you hearing from Florida State side of things? Yeah, it's going to be very interesting to see the formation, but it sounds like they're moving into a 3-5-2. They're pushing Dana Castellanos up front. They're putting Yuji Zhao into a right midfielder position, and now that Claire Robbins has come back on the field, they're putting Ilana Nesbeth up front as well. So as they're pushing a whole lot of numbers forward because with Virginia dropping back so much, they want to just put the pressure on, especially out on the wing area. Yeah, Lailani Nesbeth, who Kat just talked about, number 13, in on the attack to help provide another weapon up there for Florida State. She had her first career goal. was the game winner in double overtime at Virginia Tech earlier this year. So can Virginia handle the pressure? This time they give up the free kick, which Florida State's going to play quickly. Ball for Berkeley. Still does well to keep it. Pavlisko played around with it a little too much, and Ordonia says, Here I come. But Pavlisko, what great recovery. Yeah, great defensive effort there by Pavlisko to recover on that one. I do like the adjustments, though, for Florida State because they have the ability to be a little bit more dangerous and take a little bit more risks with their tactical understanding of the game. McCool with a little leapfrog over Pavlisko. On the ground, Sandy was coming through. Berkeley broke it up, but it'll stay in possession for Virginia. You can do some hurdling in soccer, too. <laughs> Ashlyn Sarepka fouled that time. Florida State needs to be careful here. You want to play with a lot of fire and emotion, but you don't want to let it get the best of you because any time Virginia gets a chance to take a free kick, you know they will take their time as well they should, trying to work that clock under 10 minutes to play. Cavaliers trying to advance to their first ACC championship game since 2015. McCool. Bodied off by Zhao. Florida State goal kick. It's actually a great ball there by Stoudy just into McCool. McCool had a nice opportunity there just to bring that ball down. Try and do a little more with it. Ordonez will come out. Rebecca Jarrett back into the match. Speedy sophomore out of Washington Township, New Jersey. Mistake there by Virginia, or at least that's the way it looked in the eyes of the assistant referee. Spanstra thought she shepherded that ball out of bounds safely, but in the eyes of the referee, she touched it. And so now it'll be a corner kick for Florida State. A corner kick goal for Virginia is the difference so far in this match. Yep, I'm watching. I'm watching. Can Florida State do the same? Howell, the header, it's flipped in, and it is a goal! Florida State has tied it up! Well, I said if any team could get back in this game, being down a goal, it's Florida State. This time, this service comes from Castellanos. Howell does the initial header, and it's McFarlane who's there to make sure that ball goes into the net. Laura Ivory was blocked visually, couldn't see where the ball was. You can just take another look here as Howell gets that first head. 
and it just touches off. Looks like it was like the back of McFarland to go into the back of the net past Laura Ivory. So two goals off of corner kicks now. See this match tied at one. Kristen McFarland, the redshirt junior with her fifth goal of the season. Had to miss much of the match in the regular season against Virginia. Wasn't feeling well. I think she's feeling pretty good right about now. And just after Virginia shifted into more of a defensive four. formation as well. Now with this game being tied back up. Looking to see which team becomes more of the aggressor here. All those tactics you heard Lori and Kat telling you about on the sidelines. We'll see how those might change, in particular for Virginia, who was in protect mode as much as they could be. Now need to get back into that scoring frame of mind. And that's where Florida State has been. That's where they'd like to stay. I think that's always, we just, we talked about it, Jenna. That's always so challenging for teams when they shift into that state of mind. And think about that corner kick. Remember, it was given up by what appeared to be a mistake. Spanstra watched the ball go out of bounds, thought that was going to be a Virginia goal kick. Instead, it's a corner from Castellanos right here, who got credited with one of the assists along with Howell. Zhao looking to slip it through for McFarland. A lot of numbers in a tight amount of space centrally, so Berkeley wisely gets it wide for Newton. And how good is Howell been in there, too? I mean, it seems like she is there to win every ball. Jarrett just came back into the match after a few minutes of rest on the bench. Could not get it around Berkeley. Powell is down, but back to her feet. Such a tough player, part of the US U20 World Cup team. Here recently, and her dad, a former Super Bowl champion. The Tampa Bay Bucks. Jalen, a big part of that game-tying goal in the 82nd minute by Kristen McFarland. Berkeley overhit that one a little. We are back to being tied in our first semifinal between Virginia and Florida State. It was 0 0 to the 67th minute when Virginia scored first. Florida State tying it in the 82nd minute, and now might have to wait a little longer. NC State, North Carolina, ready for our second semifinal. That one slated to come your way at 5.30 Eastern. These two teams went to double overtime in the regular season. Virginia getting the game winner. Megan McCool off, what else, a corner kick. As that has led to both goals in our match here today as well. Zhao has some time and space. Nobody stepped into the ball initially, so usually Zhao is going to carry it on through. Out for nice one. Howell could take this herself. Instead goes to Robbins. Robbins, Zhao, the touch out of bounds for a goal kick. Yeah, but but better recovery there by Virginia. The, Space was just getting so stretched. Zhao had so much time there in the midfield. Eventually, just with the buildup, allowed some more defenders and midfielders to get back defensively for Virginia. Tim and Dawson back on for Virginia. Under four minutes to play in regulation. Overtime is forthcoming if we remain tied.
stepping from Zandi to take it away before it could get to Howell. She'll get it back now. Cindy Zandi has a goal or an assist in the last three matches out to Jarrett. Jarrett sneaks it through for McCall, who may have been tripped but was offside anyway, so it won't matter. Virginia. And Jarrett is so used to taking that ball end line and serving it in. It was a nice little move, touch she made to the inside. And you can see here a great shot and angle, just a step or two offside. Good call by the referee and the assistant referee. Fifth time in this match, Virginia has been caught in an offside position. McLernan trying to spin her way free. She's fouled. I don't know if you can hear it, Jeff, but I'm hearing the coaches over there saying, get forward, get forward. Take advantage of this set piece. Get numbers up there. Neither team would really like to have to play more minutes than they need to beyond the 90. Not with the championship looming on Sunday. Had one overtime match so far in this ACC tournament. As this ball goes toward McCool, Berkeley was right behind her to get it. Dawson now back to Morris, who had the goal for the Cavaliers earlier in this match. Jarrett has two, now three defenders. She gets it through for Taryn Torres. Pops it back, looks up. Florida State just closing down any space almost as quickly as it opens. McLarnon, everybody up right now for Virginia. Stouty. She'll go back for McLarnon. Castellanos up for McFarland, who could try to take her chances here if she can get her out more. Kristen McFarland looking for a little more. Morse lays out the ball is basically stuck there. Yeah, I was she had to get herself up. I was waiting for her to stand up. I'm not sure what Morse. Oh, they're gonna play this quick. Now the whistle is blown. You can see here. Morse does a nice job of getting back defensively. McFarland does had a nice little touch here, but Morse cannot hold on to that ball in between her legs like that. So our referee, Mark Gorak, will try to get everything cleared up here. It is a fraction of an inch outside maybe that line is where Castellanos has set it down from the 18-yard box. I mean, even if it was inside the 18, which oh, it just is. pushed it yep. in, it's yep. still going to be an indirect kick. So you have two players there for Florida State. All it takes is a touch by one, a finish by the other in that situation. One person to charge! Laurel Ivory trying to get her defense situated with 17 seconds Talia, left on the clock. The Florida State, Rebecca, stay can they do something with this shot? It is up and over. What an opportunity and a strange set of circumstances that led to it. But it results in a ball three, over the crossbar. Yeah, not a bad look, too, from Castellanos. Just sailed over. So we're going to see this into an overtime situation. This is the second overtime match of this ACC tournament. The NC State Wolfpack, who you'll see coming up in our second semifinal, emerged victorious in overtime in their quarterfinal match at we'll Louisville. And now overtime, we're headed overtime. to overtime as both these teams will try to figure out a way to get the through to that championship on Sunday. We'll tell you what's coming up when we come back. T-Mobile's newest, most powerful signal is here. Experience it with the amazing new iPhone 11. And right now, T-Mobile has the best deal on iPhone. Get four lines of unlimited with four iPhone 11s included for only $35 a line. All on a signal that goes farther than ever before. That's right, 
Get four unlimited lines and four iPhone 11s for $35 a line. Only at T-Mobile. Overtime on the way from Cary, North Carolina in our first ACC Women's Soccer semifinal of the day. 1-1 one, one after 90 minutes, which was not enough to decide it between these two. Jen Hildreth, Angela Hughley. How did we know this might happen overtime between these two teams? Both of these teams are quality <laughs> opponents here, but also just some interesting turn of events that really happened in this matchup. And I said it during the regular play here, Florida State was not a team that was just going to lay over and give this one up. Yeah, when Virginia took the lead, Florida State did find a way back in. We'll show you how it all happened. Virginia got a flurry of corners all together, and then on the third one in a row, Zoe Morse, the defender, the senior, putting it home in the 67th minute. Morse completely unmarked there, was able to put that one away, and then on the other side, Spancher actually thought she could let this one go, but she did have a little bit of a touch before that one went into a corner kick for Florida State. That set up Jalen Howell, Kristen McFarland flicks it in, that was the 82nd minute. Then this happened with about 20 seconds left in the match. A dangerous play called there on Zoe Morse as she just didn't let the ball go. So Cassianos has an indirect free kick from just inside that 18 yard line, spins it up and over. And so here we are, headed to overtime. We'll set you up on exactly what that looks like. In the college game, two 10-minute overtime periods, although they are sudden victory or golden goal. So first goal wins it. Now, if they are tied after that, being that we are in the postseason, get ready for everyone's favorite penalty kick shootout. So we shall see if either of these two teams can find a way through in overtime in the regular season meeting. It was the Virginia Cavaliers. It was 0-0 after regulation in Tallahassee in the regular season. And then off a corner kick, Megan McCool found the game winner for Virginia in that one in the 104th minute. So here we go, overtime underway from Cary, North Carolina. Jen Hildreth, Angela Hughley, Kat Whitehill, Lori Lindsay doing our excellent reporting down on the field for this match. All working a little overtime and happy to have you with us. First of two semifinals, needed a little more time to decide who would advance to Sunday's ACC championship game. North Carolina, NC State coming up next in our second semifinal. And this is one of those semifinals that almost feels like a championship match with the number two, number three seed in Virginia and Florida State. I feel like we've seen a lot more of Kristen McFarland, not just on the goal, number 20 there at the top of the Florida State attack, but just been a little more involved and more active in the second half as that wore on. And I think just the pressure that she's starting to put on that back line for Virginia has increased as we've seen the game go on. You would think Florida State probably carries a little bit more of the momentum here into this overtime period since they did come back and get that game time goal in the 82nd minute. I think it just elevated and amped everybody <laughs> up a little bit. Just the realization of what's really at stake here. For Florida State, it's a team trying to continue. It has been tremendous success in the ACC tournament. They've won six of the last eight ACC tournament titles, including last year. And for the Virginia Cavaliers, trying to get back to that ACC championship game for the first time since 2015. Just two ACC tournament titles in the Cavaliers' storied career, 2004 and 2012. McFarland back onto the ball, has some time and space. Looks for help, Howell's coming in central. Picks out Castellanos. Two defenders quickly converge and take it away. Gorzak, one of those, still with it, or was with it for Virginia. You are undoubtedly getting a look at two teams who have the potential to go very far in the NCAA tournament as well. Two of the top teams in the country right here facing off in the ACC semifinals. Virginia 
has not lost a match all season. One of two unbeaten teams remaining, the top ranked team in the country. Florida State, the defending national champs, ranked number five in the latest poll. And they are the two seed versus Virginia's three seed here in the ACC tournament. Jeffers. McFarland back to Zhao. Robin's calling for it. McFarland happy to deliver. Zhao will try to get there. And Laurel Ivory beats her to it. And these first and second balls to be won here. Off kicks from goalkeepers and set pieces are really important just because it maintains that possession with limited time now in overtime. Holding on to the ball more is even more crucial in that buildup to look to find that goal. Jared over to Zandi, who's played in the back and in the attack in this match. As the Cavaliers down two of their outside defenders, including their starter, Courtney Peterson, who similarly suffered an injury late in the regular season last year and came back in the NCAA tournament. Here is McCool. Led the ACC in goals this season. Megan McCool sneaks it through for Gorzak. Jeffers comes out. Both players stay down. Caroline Jeffers, a redshirt senior goalkeeper who was called into action in the ACC championship game a year ago. Britt Bollinger was a starter in that one. She got hurt. And yes. then Jeffers had to come in. This is the play a few moments ago. Yeah, Jeffers does a nice job there coming out too. Very brave. McCool is in a 1v1 situation here at Berkeley. Takes it in. Tries to get something on it, but Gorzak just barreling down. Jeffers is brave there coming out, making that save. And a red card after that play was issued to Gorzak. So, Angela, how might this change things now that Virginia's going to have to play down a player? Well, I'm not exactly sure I agree with that red card to start. I could see a yellow card. However, for Virginia, being down a player now, they're going to have to be very intentional in terms of how quickly they move and play that ball, looking for the opportunity to really avoid that player up situation. They're going to have to try and do that much faster, given that they're down a player. And again, with that play too, Gorsak doesn't even make that much contact with Jeffers. She's on the right. You just get another look here. She's going for the ball. It actually looks like maybe just her left leg perhaps gets her head, but there's hardly any contact there. I don't think that's a red card warranted at all. I agree. That's that's very harsh to issue that on that play. And, and meanwhile, on the again, other end. Yeah, I'm not even sure a yellow even no, is warranted. Yeah. You know, was was she reckless? No, I don't think so. I think she was a 50-foot ball. She was going for the ball, trying to get it. Jeffers didn't have it in her hand yet. She reaches out with her right. She doesn't even go. And she goes around her. Yeah, she goes around her. She doesn't even look to try to make contact with Jeffers on that. I don't agree with that call at all well, as a red card. And, and the thing is, if you're going to pull out a red card, the repercussions are so much greater than a yeah. yellow because not only do you lose a player for this match, you lose them for your next match Absolutely. too. So think about the fact that if Virginia doesn't go on, so either they miss them for the ACC championship or they miss her for their first NCAA tournament game. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that is a very bold call and decision right there. I believe they're reviewing it as right now. I think are able to take a look at this red card was the call on the field so potentially upon looking at it again we'll see if mark gorak sticks with his initial decision or see something different and i think also just being able to see a difference between a reckless challenge and seeing that right there 
I mean, that's definitely not reckless. And as you said, Jen, she tries, intentionally tries to avoid Jeffers and has minimal contact as well. Yeah. Big moment. They want to get it right. Yeah. And our referee going to be giving his explanations to the coaches here first. There he goes. And I believe he has corrected his call initially, at least. That's the Virginia response. Cat Whitehill's nearby hearing everything. Cat, what did you hear? You guys go, let's go! A bunch of different angles. Was asking for this angle, that angle, was unsure, but then they've decided to overturn the red. Coach Mark Corian was asking if this is even reviewable. The assistant referee was like, absolutely, it's reviewable. So now the decision on the field is no red card. So everybody still has 11 players on the field. Well, that's big and, and credit to the officiating crew to be determined to get it right. Absolutely. And this is where having that review comes into play. It is extremely critical. And, and this really is still relatively new in the women's college game of what can be reviewed. You get a look at it right there. So no surprise, really, that even if some of the coaches and bench personnel aren't sure what can be reviewed. You got to look at it, though. Clear. We both agree that was the right call. And of course, we had five or six different yeah. opportunities to look at it. We had our review before. <laughs> yes. So, onward we play. A reminder that it is golden goal here. Meaning, a goal ends the match and wins the game for whomever scores it. Sudden victory, if you prefer. Jarrett speeds her way around. Three defenders gets it through. Howell is there to meet it. Spanstro with the header. And it'll go out for a goal kick. And Jarrett is so quick, not just without the ball, but with the ball, too, with those touches. You see this cr cross she gets off. And with the spin it had, Spanstra tries to get something on it, but winds up heading that one out of bounds. Angela, how much do you think either team here gambles, goes after it, tries to avoid that penalty kick shootout if they can? You know, I think after that decision to be overturned by the red card, it seemed to lift Virginia up a bit. They were in a situation where they thought they could have been a player down and just using that momentum, but it's such a fine balance. Robbins plays his ball forward. It's Howell going after it. Ivory greets it right at the edge of the area. Great goalkeepers find a way of snuffing out chances before they really become a chance. Good anticipation by Ivory that time. Spanstra on the move for Virginia. Cuts it inside. Alexis Spanstra's shot is blocked by Jeffers. It goes to Jared. Her shot is in. And Virginia will move on. The defending champs are out. The Virginia Cavaliers.